I I feel this one I feel confident about. I, I knew for me it was G- Jameer Gibbs right away. You yeah. looked into Joe Mixon. You said you were leaning Mixon. Did you gain confidence through your research? Or am I right already? I could easily be right already, I think. No, I I, I would. <laughs> so here's the thing. I would lean Mixon because, you know, he's going to score touchdowns. And I feel like that's the missing ingredient for Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs would probably be really exciting, really cool. Lots of really cool receptions and speed, and he's gonna burn. He's gonna make linebackers look silly. We we, we we'll, that we'll get all that, okay? And Mixon's not particularly impressive by any means, but you know, last year we saw what it was like for Mixon to finally get some uh, pass game, you know, in, involvement. Seventy five targets, sixty receptions, four hundred and forty yards, and two touchdowns th- uh, through the air to go along with his two hundred and ten carries in fourteen games. Uh, I, that's, that's a, that's a fantastically valuable workload in an offense that sees a lot of positive game script. And while they are, while the Bengals will remain pass heavy and they should, they should be, uh, Mixon faces a a lot of, uh, advantageous situations. He also importantly gets the goal line work, which Gibbs will probably not get. Kyle, why are you so confident in Jameer Gibbs? I would be stunned if the Lions spent the amount of draft capital they spent on him and didn't give him a lot of touches, particularly targets. I think the goal line work, that's probably a fair a fair criticism of what we can expect from Gibbs. But the average number of touches for a first round running back in the past decade is 258. The average for a top 15 pick is 279. At the low end was Christian McCaffrey, ironically, and I think Gibbs skill set comps to him. McCaffrey entered the league a bit bigger and he bulked up pretty quickly as he got into the league, but a sort of usage standpoint, McCaffrey got to 230 PPR points as a rookie, didn't even sniff 200 carries. I think that's a somewhat reasonable floor. I mean, that frankly is close to the floor outside of Rashad Penny getting hurt. That has been close to the floor for a first round running back and especially the top 15 running backs. That's kind of what we can come to expect from an okay outcome as far as the first round rookies go. If you even get close to sort of the average first round rookie pushing well over 250 touches from a player who I expect to be far more efficient on a per efficient on a per touch basis, I think Gibbs is an absolute smash. So I think it's just a really strong floor ceiling combo where you can probably bet on touches, probably, you know, mix and straight up raw touches. I take him there. But in terms of like targets plus even if you take targets plus and or, uh, red zone carries, I would frankly I'd still take Gibbs straight up because he's going to out target Mixon to no end. I don't know, man. I, I, I kinda, feel like I think tough. Mixon could out target Gibbs. I, I think what I I think what I think is that my case is more of a negative Mixon case than a positive Gibbs case because we know that things just a lot of times don't work out the way teams are expecting We're like these rookie change of pace backs. It's pretty rare to see a guy with such insane draft capital in that role, which does lead you to believe it will be different with Jameer Gibbs. We know that he's got the skill set that's going to like scream playing important downs, except for maybe not at the goal line, of course, where David Montgomery, uh, it is David Montgomery, right? Yeah. <laughs> David Montgomery. Um, Mixon, I just think the Bengals don't want to do this again. Like I think the 60 receptions was a fluke. To be honest, and they spent the whole offseason basically telegraphing. They didn't feel like they really needed him on the roster. That that they would prefer that he was on the roster. Clearly, since he they did keep him on the roster after a restructure. But they spent time talking up Travion Williams. They used a day three pick on Chase Brown, who can do some of the things that Joe Mixon does. And Joe Mixon was so inefficient, like especially on the ground last year, he could just continue to regress in that area. Maybe kind of like force his way off the field. I mean, there's a guy last year who. It's still like stunning to me how many third downs Joe Mixon did not play and yet still somehow caught 60 passes. It just seemed like it is crazy. The confluence of events that that can't happen again. Uh, I I think the floor is going to kind of start to fall out for Joe Mixon this year. Because they they throw so much and he was actually in there Mm -hmm. on on, on those passing plays. By the way, Mixon, at least, and unless things change dramatically for him this year, and I I don't really see that happening, uh, last year, only Jamal Williams had more carries inside the 10 yard line than Mixon. Mixon at 29 in 14 Guess games. Guess who's getting those this year? Uh, yeah, I was about to say the same thing. The Even though Jameer Gibbs is it's not, it's David Montgomery. Who yeah, it's, it's probably David Montgomery, but it, no. it, it, it could be. It, it, it could be Jameer Gibbs who gets those 
Jimmy, 40, would you say 60, uh, 200 some inside the five carries? 45. <laughs> Jamal 45. Williams had 45 no, rushing no, no, attempts. No, no. It was 172. 10. 172. Mm-hmm. That's why every time you turned on your TV, it was like, and here's Jamal Williams scoring. <laughs> And you he averages 2.1 yards per carry and is two times the amount of touchdowns of any other player in the league. So, yeah, I, I th- that's the Mixon's role is so valuable in a good offense. I don't know. It, it mine is truly like gut level analysis, but my, my gut level analysis on Joe Mixon is that they just they don't love what he brings to the table and that he kind of keeps like defaulting into it, but that they're looking for reasons to not use him the way he was used last oh, year. Thankfully, there's nobody else. It is I think that's the strongest argument is like I losing they could play him on third downs. Like they lost to Manje P. Ryan and like Chris Evan Travion Williams were guys who they were splitting between healthy scratches. It's like, oh, this guy plays special teams, let's get him out there. No, nope, let's go with this one. And you know, day three pick on another running back doesn't move the needle a ton. I think that's the argument is is that he's just gonna play a ton of snaps on a great offense. He can even play more, you know, passing downs. It's just not an argument I love to make because it's the argument we always fall into is like, well, someone's got to get these touches, but then it's rarely the guy we are betting on because he's he's there in drafts only because of volume, not because of what we perceive as talent. It's very that is always a problem. Zone. And that sometimes it works for like a year. Mm-hmm. Though that very quickly always says diminishing returns. Like the yeah, I mean, it's worked with James Conner. Like I think James Conner was fine two years ago. Keep getting he was, away with he was it, yeah. Solid, but man, he was an incredible fantasy option two years ago. 